Hello students, welcome to our YouTube channel RIW Raghavendra Institute of Educational Excellence. Dear students, I am Kaushik Nagarajan, Accountancy Faculty and I am going to take you to a new chapter, Accounts of a Not-for-Profit Organization. Yes, this chapter is for 10 marks in our board examination for CBSE levels and of course it is one of the most important topic even for state board students. Let's get started with the topic accounts for not-for-profit organization. Not-for-profit organization is popularly known as NPO non-profit organization. The meaning of NPO is quite simple Non-profit organizations are those organizations which are set up with the ultimate objective of providing service and not to earn any private profits. I repeat it. The meaning of NPO is quite simple. It says that NPO, that is non-profit organization, are those organizations which are set up with the ultimate objective of providing service and not to earn any private profits. Examples of such NPO can be schools, colleges, hospitals which are governed by the government or which is run by the government, the temples, library, sports club, literary society, etc. The main objective of NPO is to serve the society. So service providing and to serve the society is the ultimate goal of an NPO. However, as we have mentioned that NPOs are those organizations which is set up with the ultimate objective of providing service alone and not to earn any private profits. But at times, there are some chances where an NPO can also earn profits. It is not quite often. It is very rare. It doesn't happen quite frequently. It's very rare. And as you all know one thing that to start any business or to set up any business, we need the most important item that is called as capital or investments funds we name them in different name all we name them with different names now we should understand how does an NPO gets the basic requirement for running their operations that is funds in case of sole proprietor, the required funds will be provided by the proprietor, that is a sole proprietor. In case of partnership, the amount will be contributed by the respective partners. And in case of companies, it will be the shareholders who contribute towards the shares of the company. But however, when it comes to NPO, the required funds to run the operations comes from its members. Usually, the members of NPO are termed as managing trustees. So, in NPO, the required funds are sponsored or we can say in other words that for an NPO, members provides the basic requirement that is the funds and these funds can be in the form of donations as well as subscriptions any doubt so far and listen students this is the most important topic when it comes to CBSE and this one unit is for 10 marks this one unit is for 10 marks out of the 
40 marks which you are going to take up in the second phase. So please don't take this topic as lightly as how you took in term one few topics or as lightly how you take other topics. This one topic alone will bat 10 marks. So please understand and please provide your valuable feedback in the comment section after watching the complete video. And also post your doubts in the comment section so that we will be able to address your query immediately and we make sure that you understand the concept and you take away the concepts. Here, as I said, NPO will get the required funds from their members in the form of donation or subscriptions. Basically, donations are of two types. They are general donation and specific donation. General donations are those donations which are revenue in nature and it doesn't have any specific condition on its usage. However, the specific donations are those donations which are capital in nature and they definitely have some specific condition on their usage. For example, the specific donation can be such as donation for building, donation for matches, donations for library, so on and so forth. In the same way, even subscriptions are broadly classified into two types. They are number one, general subscriptions and number two, specific subscriptions. General subscriptions are similar to general donation. They are revenue based items. Whereas specific subscriptions are similar to specific donations which are capital based items. General donation can be used for any purpose whereas specific donations can be used for that respective purpose for which we have received. In the same way, general subscription can be used for any purpose whereas specific subscription has to be used only for the purpose for which we have received it. Any doubts so far? As of now, we have just discussed what is an NPO is all about and how does an NPO get the basic requirement that is the funds to start up their business or to start up their operations and what are the two different types of receipts which an NPO receives that is donation as well as subscription and the types of donation and types of subscription. Now moving on to the most important segment in this chapter. The chapter NPO is also subject to preparation of some accounts which is mandatory as per the legal requirement and as per the statutory framework. So some of the important accounts which an NPO has to prepare are as follows. Totally an NPO has to prepare three important accounts namely number one receipts and payment account, number two income and expenditure account and number three, balance sheet. Students, please do remember that NPO is a three letter chapter, non profit organization. So, NPO, it is a three letter chapter. And in this chapter, we are preparing only three different types of accounts they are income and expenditure account receipts and payment account and finally the balance sheet. Now let us try to understand each of these accounts in an elaborate manner so that it gives us a clarity and also it will help us to work out the problems 
without any difficulties so please listen carefully and take the notes as informed or as it is projected in the screen and we will be circulating these notes in our whatsapp and also in our channel so please spend some time listen carefully to the lecture and then work out the problems let's start with the features of the receipts and payment account the account itself says it is an account which deals with receipts that is inflow of cash and payment that is outflow of cash so receipts and payment account is completely based on the cash basis of accounting and not on any basis of accounting so they follow cash basis of accounting i repeat it npo for in that receipts and payment account follows cash base of accounting according to this only the cash which we have received or the cash which we have paid are only supposed to be recorded so any cash which happens to be like payable or receivable are not supposed to be recorded under this books so it follows a real account principle according to this principle we will show the receipts on the debit side and all the payments on the credit side i repeat it receipts and payment account is purely based on accrual base of accounting point number 1 point number 2 is it follows the real account principle according to which we will debit the receipts and credit the payments and the most important thing in this concept is that it will accommodate both revenue as well as the capital based items so when it comes to receipts and payment account it records both revenue based items as well as capital based item when i talk about revenue based items it includes both revenue receipts as well as capital receipts and revenue payments as well as capital payments now what is this revenue receipts or revenue payments and capital receipts and capital payments quite simple any receipts which we receive quite frequently is known as a revenue receipt the quite opposite of this is revenue payment and the next one is that capital receipts and capital payments according to capital receipts capital receipts are those receipts which are not subject to occur quite frequently which we won't be receiving it quite frequently the same applies even in case of your capital payments which you won't be performing it quite frequently and this receipts and payment account will contain information with respect to the current year previous year and next year also so ultimately receipts and payment account will be recording the data for the current year previous year and next year also but one thing we all have to keep in our mind is that items such as depreciation and discounts are not supposed to be recorded items such as depreciation and discount are not supposed to be recorded and also items such as payable receivables outstanding prepaid accrued 
and advance payments which have been received are not supposed to be recorded you may wonder why we won't be recording depreciation or discount it's quite simple discount and depreciation are non cash items but we do record only those cash items which means cash receipts on the debit side and cash payments on the credit side that's the logic behind this concept why we don't record these two items and we take into account the others and of course your receipts and payment account will begin with your opening balance of cash in hand and cash at bank however the opening balance of cash in hand or cash at bank will show favorable balance and of course at times they will also show unfavorable balance or we otherwise call them as an overdraft balance so basically your receipts and payment account will begin or start with opening balance of cash in hand or cash at bank or at times even both whereas your closing balances can be either favorable or unfavorable also your opening balances can be favorable or unfavorable so it begins with your opening balance of cash in hand or cash at bank or both and ends with the closing balance of cash in hand or cash at bank and most importantly the opening balance if it is a favorable then it should show debit balance however if it is an unfavorable or overdraft it will show an overdraft balance similarly even for the closing balance favorable balance will be credited unfavorable or overdraft balance will be debited your receipts and payment account records on debit side the receipts and it records the payments on its credit side and here i have also just given an outline of your receipts and payments account whenever you are going to work out any problem for receipts and payment account please do remember these precautionary measures which you have to taken point number 1 check out whether do you have the name of the npo mentioned in the question if you have the name of an npo then you have to record the name of the npo first followed by that you should write a heading what account you are going to prepare whether it is a receipts and payment account or income or expenditure account so receipts and payment account for which year and that will have to be recorded and the year 31st of march 2020 or 2021 or whatever be the year as given in the question you have to record it if it is not 31st of march then check in whether it is december then in that case it should be as 31st of december the respective year and of course the debit side is for the receipts and the credit side is for the payment and you have also been mentioned that whenever you record any item on the debit side it must have the word to and it should bear the word by respectively to should be recorded for those accounts or items which will find a place on debit side of receipts and payment account and buy will be recorded on the credit side of your receipts and payment account any doubts so far my dear students we have seen what is an npo we have also discussed 
how does an NPO get the most important item that is investments and we have also discussed like what sort of items that an NPO get from an another NPO that is what sort of items will an NPO will receive in the form of receipts that is capital receipts as well as revenue receipts and what sort of payments will they do that is capital payment and revenue payments and until this I hope so that it is very clear to you now moving on to the most important notes which you all have to keep in mind before you perform the problems under this category it's mentioned that whenever you are preparing receipts and payment account for any NPO ensure that whether the NPO is a newly established one or are they doing the business or are they in operations for more than a year if they are a newly started business that means newly started NPO then in that situation you won't be finding any opening balances of cash in hand or cash at bank however you will be ending up with the closing balance of cash in hand and cash at bank this is the first point which needs to be kept in mind the second point which we insist is that when opening balance of cash in hand or cash at bank are given but closing balance of either of these two that is cash in hand or cash at bank is not given then the entire amount of the closing balance will be treated as your amount transferred to cash in hand and cash at bank I repeat it if in case you don't find the amount in your closing balance then the entire amount what we have receiving as a balancing figure should be transferred towards cash in hand and cash at bank so with this I am stopping the today's session with respect to accounts for a not-for-profit organization under which we have started up with the calculation or computation of receipts and payments account the end result of this receipts and payment account will be you will be receiving the closing balance of cash in hand or closing balance of cash at bank I hope you all have got the concepts what you have been taught so far if you have any further queries or doubts please do post your valuable feedback and also your comments or suggestions so that we will be in a position to reach you out as early as possible and we may try to resolve your queries so that we ensure that each one of our student gets 40 out of 40 or the respective marks which is for sent up. Thank you students. All the best.